Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chat with my co-host Yuri Cataldo, and today we are uh, welcoming a guest who's in the world of mining, Amir Ness, the CEO of Elevate Group. Amir, great to have you. Thank you for joining. Thanks, guys. Good to be here. Thanks for so, coming. So, Amir, I mean, you've been in mining for how long now? So, we started, well, we, I've personally been involved in mining for a little over, a little less than two years now. Um, Elevate Group started about eight months ago, um, and that was kind of my brainchild um, and my partner, Gabby. We, um, we had a private mine, basically, which is located in Irkutsk, Siberia, and then we opened it up to the public, really kind of as a response to what we thought was wrong uh, with the cloud mining model. We okay. didn't like cloud mining. It was, it was really uh, messed up you could say for from an investor's perspective so we 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 said we could do this a lot better and we did and um, just, just to clarify I mean, there's a lot of different types of mining because you have like online mining like you can go to nice hash and and you know borrow other people's mining facilities or there's people that are like bitmain that have you know all their assets in, in walls you know and yeah. on units running so which which world of mining are you the, are you residing in? Just so everyone knows a little bit more about you know what you're doing. We're, so we're like a classic data center, is what you'd call it, where you know you you don't go online or mine or anything like that because you need to have an ASIC miner, which you know is a heavy duty processor. You can't do this on a CPU or a GPU. Yeah. So mm -hmm. our and that's basically our essential value proposition is we're able to manage. Um, and run the ASIC miners efficiently um, because of power costs. We have the engineering um, staff on site. We have security on site. We have cold weather in Siberia and low power costs. All of these elements, <laughs> yeah, all of these elements put together to do uh, to get us to basically where we can go out there and say, look, we have one of the best commercial platforms. And this is how you can mine with us. So it's kind of like what we call mass, uh, mining as a service. Sure. So, go ahead, go ahead. I would say, uh, Amir, why did you decide to get into mining? Like what was it where you're like, you know what, I wanna good open question. a data center in Siberia. Yeah, so good question. I like mining for the following reason. One is I, I love Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin is more than what we're seeing now. In other words, I think Bitcoin is going to be a universally denominated uh, currency, uh, a currency that will be able to stand against every single other currency as the main currency, basically. Okay. So everything valued relative to Bitcoin. Um, and even though I knew there were gonna be a lot of other amazing blockchain companies, and they were going to do 10x and 100x and 1,000x. My background is, is um, in trading. And one of the things I picked up in trading is you can't trade everything, number one. And number two, I didn't want to trade anymore. Uh, I, I wanted to stop trading and I wanted to start accumulating something. So the idea of, of passive income in Bitcoin yeah um was very important to me you know i could build a business around bitcoin and at the same time provide other people with something i think they would want which is passive income in bitcoin they, sure. they other people are going to share the same um sentiment and the same uh feeling so it was kind of a personal decision but also one that, a business decision based on what i thought other people would find valuable and want Sure. So what is the current state of mining now? I mean, there's been a lot of discussions about, you know, well, with the price being down, it's obviously a bit of a problem. You've got yeah, it on, sucks. On the, on the, right yeah, now. and right now you've also got a lot of mining companies that have been shutting because yeah. they're not making profits. But just give us a little bit of a kind of overview. Of what's happening in the mining world, and are we at risk? Is the whole thing going to go to zero? Just give us a feeling yeah. as to how do you operate and run this kind of context or environment, and you know. You know, yeah. how is it working, so, you know, so, so just to, for people to understand what's happening really from the from the ground of a real mining company running this stuff? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, so the kind of quick answer is we're in a bear market. 
And mm -hmm. uh, so we're not immune to that. Um, you know, it's not, it, it's good mining because mining is not a, a short term thing. You know, you're not mining for one day or one month or whatever. So it has these components to it that, yeah, it's not good right now. If your, your returns are, are very low right now. However, it's like, here's an example. October was like a really difficult month. It was the month where, because you have difficulty moving every two weeks, if you have price going down, accelerating faster than difficulty, which is what you had in October, then you, you really get hurt because you've got, you know, lower value of Bitcoin being mined and higher difficulty. Let me just translate that into economic terms for Yeah, I was just gonna say, so why don't you just explain for yeah. everybody what you what your definition of difficulty <laughs> is just for I know I know a lot of people that are in crypto, you know, probably know, but there's a lot of people yeah, who sure. may so not so explain what difficulty is first. So difficulty is a variable that's used in the Bitcoin network algorithm that that basically monitors um, how, how much Bitcoin a miner receives in order for processing and securing the network. So it's like a moderating mechanism and it changes every two weeks, which means it also lags every, you know, it lags every day, like every day that something is happening and we get closer to a difficulty adjustment, the miners are gonna go, uh, it's gonna become easier or harder to mine Bitcoin, but that won't take effect for two weeks. So if the price of Bitcoin goes down and the difficulty stays the same, then you're, mo you're making less money. Now, in October, on the way down, that's what happened. And so, you know, mining profits, that, you know, a lot of, a lot of miners went out uh, that month and said no more. Right. Um, so now we have really the good, Difficulty though is it is it driven by the number of people mining or is yes it, is it's it, driven by the number of miners okay. mining exactly okay is it also driven by the number of transactions running through the system so if there's more transactions or less transactions yes that's going to affect the the uh, the difficulty network that's also why mining will be I believe will be very good in the years to come because there will be more transactions on the network. Right, into, right. that need to be mined right so that's why i believe we're in a growing industry and it's okay right. so i've gotten to the point obviously as a miner and and you know running elevate where it's it's all about the big picture and how yeah. big we want to be you know over the next one two three years and i think that's how everybody should look at starting a mining portfolio because if you're just in it to start one asic or two asics or something like that you know, you could probably find something else to get involved in. For sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Mining is more about building. Uh, you know, it's like somebody wants to buy an income property. Um, you know, yeah, you buy one apartment building, but then you really decide, okay, wait, I want to get into real estate. And you start buying more, yeah. or you eventually sell that building because you don't want to manage it or you don't want to de deal with this or that or whatever it is. Yeah. Similar to that yeah. in mining, the beauty of what we're doing is that we're making it hands-free for people to get involved right. so that it's really a passive investment when mining is really actually, uh, uh, you know, a very actively managed type of investment. So just one quick question related to that, and then Yuri, you jump in. So the, the other sure. question I had was that I know that we're reaching a point where in about a year from now, I think about a year from May, we're facing a, um, a potential yeah. happening of mm -hmm. the uh, amount of uh, coins that you get in the block as a reward. So what, yeah. so what does something like that do to running a business like a mining business like yours? How does that impact you? So look, you, you have to look at the um, kind of historical um, effect of the having, which is it's very important because the the amount of Bitcoin to, to be mined as rewards will become will get cut in half. Right. Right. Exactly. So that it's basically telling you it's going to get cut in half. Right. Now, at every having, Bitcoin is more than doubled in price. So what is that telling you, right? Now that doesn't even take into consideration that more adoption might come, that you know certain banks might start adopting uh, uh, crypt, uh, Bitcoin as a means of va value, a storage of value. There's so many things that could happen and that are happening right now. 
Um, and we are in, in the middle of exciting times because, you know, it could be, it could be any time where a, a political body or a big institutional body um, gives Bitcoin even more recognition. Like, for example, in, um, I forgot what country it was, but they now, um, they now recognize Bitcoin as currency. I forgot which country it was, but it was a country that, that you know, is recognizable and they do. I know Germany accepts Bitcoin as, um, as monetary value. Well, Japan so, has like, been pretty open about Bitcoin yeah. being a yeah. currency. So, and there's like, states in the U.S. now that are legalizing. I mean, Florida. That's right. That's right. It's, uh, and Wyoming. Ohio too. Wyoming. Wyoming. Wyoming is, is yeah. it's now totally legal. It's currency. So yeah. look, once you kind of combine these geopolitical events with, let's say, a bull market in the price, you're, I believe you're going to see way, way higher Bitcoin prices. And this is the interesting thing. The cool thing about mining is even though in October the mining profits were next to nothing, they had gone up just from October to November, about 400%. So all of a sudden, that's why mining is good in a bear market, because you're preparing and getting online at a time where it is a bear market. But if you're able to sustain, if you're able to keep on treading water in a bear market, mm -hmm. then certain things that happen to, when the market turns, will you'll get a big benefit from those. And that's right. why we're... That's why we're telling everybody about who we are because we can't go out there and say, hey, come mine because you're going to make 300% returns this year. That's not what we're saying. And that's not, you know, our whole community understands that that's not what we're doing. Our community is built of miners who are serious and know what they're doing. And we've got people that have anywhere from three or four miners to, you know, over 50 or 100 miners. Um, and they understand we're mining in a bear market, but they also understand that it is possible to increase 400% from one month to the next. Wow. And if that goes on the, if that has a tailwind and we're, we're looking at, at an upside, um, it could be very, very profitable to mine. Well, that 400% yeah. is what more mined in one month relative to another? Exactly. exactly. Really? Is that, if there's that much variability in how much you find or get in a month. Yeah, well, that and a combination of price. It was that well, and of a course, combination. Yeah, so of course, right. so if you end up with four times as much as the previous month and the price doubles, then you're looking at an eight times increase on a month basis, but that's assuming that the person we're selling it every month, but if the price then drops and the difficulty changes, but you're, you're doing month by month, um, what, reporting. Distribution. Mm -hmm. So that you can yeah, see- Yeah, we're doing month doing. by month and in October, from October to November, not much happened really. You know, price right. went from like 3,000 to like 4,000 and then settled at like 36, 3,700. And that was enough to give us a 400% increase. Now imagine oh. if price doubles to like, you know, six or 7,000. Now sure. take that yeah. with a grain of salt because you are going to get some other miners that come online because of that increase. They're going to see that and they're going to want part of that. However, you're going to get, a, you've already got a lot of miners that exited the game and they're not going to come back in just because it went up a couple thousand because their price, you know, their cost of power might be seven, eight cents, which means they don't want to mess with this again because they, you know, if price goes down another 600 bucks, then they're not profitable and why do I want to play that game? So mining, if we wanted to kind of address the current state of mining, we're now where the real players are mining. The guys who understand it, who know what their cost basis is and who can come out and say, yeah, we're miners and we're going to be mining and this is what our cost basis is. And that's why we've grown. I mean, the market has shrunk. It's been a bear market. But we have, have grown over 200% in the last two months. My God. And I attribute that, wow. <laughs> I attribute that be, because of this fact. I mean, we've had small mining farms come to us and give us their miners, and we've started op their operating back end, right. essentially becoming their, their farm. Yeah. Right. So, and that's the direction we want to go in. We want to get people who want to open portfolios up, build up their rigs, 
and have us manage, manage so them. You're providing basically a hosted service where we own our assets, but you're actually provisioning them, hosting them up for people. And whereas your, some of your bigger competitors like Bitmain are just running it independently, you're literally running it as like a hosted service on behalf of others, like a cloud-based provisioning service. Yeah, you, I wouldn't even compare us to Bitmain. I would compare us to a lot of the mining ICOs that started, that created Or coins. Gemini, maybe. Yeah, and Gemini, uh, I would say more like, like for example, you know, look, look at Genesis Mining. Look or at Genesis Mining, uh, right. You know, Miner One is an ICO. Um, you know, even Ice Rock, where where that I know very well. The, these are the mining farms, but the, their problem. A lot of them have problems. You know, the cloud mining problem has a problem of cost. It's so expensive, it never really works out. The 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 mining ICOs have these tokens, and you got to own the token to be able to access your miner and your BTC, right. and you don't know how much. Um, <laughs> You don't know how much terahash you're getting for, right. for the tokens you're buying. Right. And they have to Too much variability being put into the mix. I mean, nobody wants to have a token to have a Bitcoin to have a dollar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with us, you know, the client buys the miner. They own it. We are managing it. We have a dashboard where they go online. They can yeah. see it working live. Um, you know, I'll I say one thing, Amir. You're very, very good at pitching yourself and your services. <laughs> as well is telling all of us about how mining works and i love that about you because you've got so much passion and enthusiasm about the mining industry it's great yeah i gotta tell you the re there's a reason for that and the reason was you know i was um involved in uh, uh pr for ice rock mining over a year ago i resigned you know crypto rich did a few videos on that and and here's what i did when i left and, and there were a lot of things I just didn't like. But one of the things I said to myself is the next time I get involved in mining, it's going to be something that, you know, it, it's my baby. I have, mm -hmm. I can make these dis important decisions. And all I did was take all the things I knew investors would want and create that because I know I would want that. Yeah. So that's essentially what this is about. That's what the whole community is built on. Can you go into a little more detail about kind of the best practices for people to look out for? So if, you know, if a listener wants to get involved in, in mining, what are good practices they should be looking for in companies, whether it's yours or another practice, so they yeah. won't get scammed? Okay, so it's, it's so simple, you know. If you're looking at a mining ICO, then you got to find out, okay, how are they valuing their token? What are you getting when you buy their token? And that means how much terahash are you getting? How much, how much mining power are you getting? That's mm -hmm. number one. That's, that's the number one gray area where people get lost in, so to speak. Um, the other thing uh, is what percentage of the... Um, uh, the in, the profit are are the is the mining farm going to distribute? So that's another question of how they're using the funds because when you buy tokens, they're ultimately getting Bitcoin. They're getting money. You're getting tokens. So you right. want to know what what are they doing with that? Um, and and this is not that's not something that is very easily accessible. You know, so th those two things alone are pretty major things. For sure. Um, yeah. And then and then, you know, are they um, showing you their power cost? And I don't mean just telling you what their power cost is. I mean, when they make the distribution at the end of the month, they need to show you what the profitability was, what the power cost was so that you can calculate for yourself. Oh, yeah, it makes sense because this is how many uh, watts each S9 miner uses per month, and mm -hmm. this is how much it should cost uh, if it's six cents, five cents, whatever the, the, the power cost their advertising is. So right. you, people need to be able to get that information. Yeah, that and that's information why. is really hard to come by unless you just search on the individual ASICs themselves and you'll find all sorts of great technical articles that go into it, but trying to mm -hmm. find it something that's like for just the general layman who wants to 
to dabble, but doesn't want to get in call. It's so hard to find this kind of information, unfortunately. Yeah, that that's why, you know, you, you're you asking that's somebody you're who knows <laughs> what, what you would be looking out for. And I'm telling you, like, yeah. if, the comp- if the mining farm does not post it for you or advertise it, that's mm-hmm. a problem. And that's why our whole marketing kind of gig is that we – uh, we accentuate our transparency. We re- highlight our transparency so that people can understand why it's important that we're doing whatever it is we're doing. Mm-hmm. Cool. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just sort of like taking it all in because there's so much interesting information you're sharing here with us. And I'm trying to, so I guess the, I guess the, the next thing to really ask is how does somebody like, so for example, you're running an online um, effectively cloud-based service. How does someone get started? Like if we decided here with a coin chat, we want to do this and, you know, show it to our, our subscribers and our listeners and let them participate. How would we do that? So, um, and we, I'm, I think we, we will do this, but you essentially we're updating our, we just updated our backend admin panel where people can purchase. Now we're updating our site and our front end and the marketing side. But to answer your question, um, you can, purchase a miner and have it run online within four weeks. So depending on where in the month you order, because we usually have one batch every month. We mm-hmm. just closed out our alpha miner batch, which is something we did uh, two months ago where we allowed our existing investors to purchase pre-owned miners, which we call the alpha miners, because all these miners that went out, you know, out and, and stopped mining, they sold their, their rigs at really cheap prices. So wow. we were able to enter the secondary Fire market. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we entered the secondary market. We bought a lot of miners, hundreds, and we were able to lower our cost per terahash for our investors by 40 to 50%. Okay. Wow. Wow. And that's, that's to give you an idea of why we've grown over 200% in just two months, because we were able to go to our existing um, clients and say, your cost per terahash can get cut in half now. We're, and we did it at like no margin, hardly any margin for Elevate, mm-hmm. specifically so that our investor base could do that. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we're doing. And we're going to still offer you know, terahash at very good prices. Um, but that was just like one example sure. of like what sure. we did. Very cool. Yeah. So we're, we'll be able to show your, your readership, um, how to do it. Uh, you log in, we, we only accept Bitcoin, so you do have to buy Bitcoin, but that's easy. We can even help the uh, client. <laughs> with that. Um, I think most people probably that, that are listening and watching our show probably know how, and if they don't, then of course they can always drop us a note down in the description below here or they can email us at the coin chat podcast at gmail.com and we'll be very happy to help anybody that's listening or watching that wants to get a little bit of a a little bit of a how to get started um quick you know tips and pointers although we've covered this in previous episodes but if they want to get some bitcoin and get started in mining we'll certainly help them on that one no problem there yeah. Yep. And it's, it's all, uh, you know, we put the serial number of the miner into the awesome miner dashboard. You, you, you see your miner running, you see the Terra hash, um, you see the profitability and we're making some upgrades pretty soon about how we handle wallets and stuff like that. It's going to be really cool. I think people will really, um, how appreciate it. And oh, then cool. also, you go ahead, go ahead. I would say, um, Amir, if, if uh, people want to see more about your company, what is your website address or where can they go online to find it? Sure. So you guys have a link, I think, there. They can, they can click on that. Um, it's elevategroup.io. Um, and our Telegram uh, group, which is very, you know, active. And we have, we don't grow, you know, we, we grow organically. So it's all real there, um, all real people. And uh, that's Elevate Group on Telegram. So uh, very cool. either one of those is a, a good, good start. Well, for an yeah. opening episode on mining, I think this has been great. And um, I think, you know, Yuri, I think you and I have been talking about it and offline with Amir. So Amir, we're going to take you up on that little offer to, um, to run an experiment. Mm-hmm. So yeah. for everybody who's listening and watching into this, Yuri and I are going to, to go for it. So with Amir's help, we're going to follow up on some future episodes where we're going to go through the process and show people what online cloud-based mining is like. 
in no way are we specifically promoting the Elevate Group. I need to say that because, of course, we're not here to sponsor or promote anything. But um, it's an opportunity for us to show people how mining works and how it works online. And Amir has graciously agreed to, um, to sponsor us to do that. So we're going to make this a very interactive set of mining episodes. Mm -hmm. and, um, Amir, do you have anything else you'd like to close with before we close out the episode today? No, I'm looking forward to, to the progression of the three episodes. I think, I think you guys and the three readers will I mean, uh, stop at three. You'll, you'll get into mining yeah. when you're done with it. <laughs> well, I, I have done mining on the GPUs before, so it's something we've talked about, and we've talked and told people about how to set up mining rigs and, in the GPU world. But, of course, mining has moved into so many directions between the big miners with all their, their stuff, all the online mining that you can do by just renting hash power, the GPU, yeah. there's CPU, there's mobile, and proof of stake, master notes, and right. all the other proof of whatevers that we can barely understand. <laughs> I've even seen a new one today called proof of revenue, which we're talking about using for the exchanges to prove yeah. that we have a proof of funds <laughs> or something like this. So, um, so yeah, interesting times Good. ahead. But we're, we're looking forward to working with you and having you as a regular on here to talk about what's happening in the States and the state of mining, the world of mining, and what's changing, progressing. Um, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening in today to the Coin Chat with Yuri Cataldo and our, our newest member, pseudo-member of the team, Amir Ness, who's going to guide us through the world of mining. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe on the way out. We're going to be coming back with lots more on mining. It's a hot topic. It never goes away. And until next time, to the moon, have a great one. <laughs>